naming ionic and molecular compounds. Firstly, let me teach you about metals and non-metals in the periodic table. Let consider this periodic table. Now this line differentiate metals from non-metals. At the left side of the periodic table, there are metals. While at the right side of the periodic table, there are non-metals. Secondly, you must learn charge of elements. The charge on first group elements is 1. The charge on second group elements is 2. The charge on third group elements is positive 3. Remember that these are transition metals. They either have plus 2 charge or plus 3 charge. Now in case of non-metals, I write negative 1, negative 2 and negative 3. The charge on 7th group elements is negative 1. The charge on 6th group elements is negative 2. And the charge on 5th group elements is negative 2. Thus remember these basic concepts of metals and non-metals. Now let me teach you that what are ionic compounds? Well, those chemical compounds formed when a metal atom loses an electron and a non-metal atom gains an electron, they are called ionic compounds. Remember that ionic bond is always formed between metals and non-metals. For example, consider sodium atom and chlorine atom. Now here, sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal. As usual, sodium loses an electron while chlorine gains this electron. As a result of this loss and gain of electron, a new compound is formed which we call sodium chloride. This sodium chloride is an ionic compound because it is formed between metals and non-metals. Thus remember that ionic compounds are formed between metals and non-metals by complete transfer of electrons. Now we will learn naming ionic compounds. Let I write the first second groups of the periodic table and then the seventh group of the periodic table. The charge on first group is positive 1, the charge on the second group is positive 2 and the charge on the seventh group is negative 1. Now let me teach you criss-cross method. Let consider this ionic compound like potassium chloride. The symbol of potassium is K and that of chloride is Cl. We know that potassium is present in the first group, so it carries positive 1 charge. Secondly, chlorine is present in the seventh group. It carries negative 1 charge. Now according to criss-cross method, I cross the positive and the negative charge. I get potassium 1, chlorine 1. Here, the subscript of potassium and chlorine are the same, so I cancel them. I get potassium chloride. So this is the chemical formula of potassium chloride. Secondly, consider lithium oxide. We know that the symbol of lithium is Li and that of oxide is O. Lithium is present in the first group, so it carries positive one charge. Oxygen is present in the sixth group. It carries negative two charge. Now according to criss-cross method, I cross the positive and the negative charge. I get lithium two, oxygen one. As usual, we do not write one as a subscript. Thus I get Li2O. It is lithium oxide. Thus by this way, we can easily write the formulae of ionic compounds. Now consider these ionic formulae and write their respective names. Firstly, I write magnesium and bromine. Now according to criss-cross method, this two subscript belongs to magnesium. Let me repeat it. According to criss-cross method, this two subscript belongs to magnesium. So I write here plus 2. This one subscript of magnesium belongs to bromine. I write here negative 1. This Mg stands for magnesium, Br stands for bromine, 
but I write IDE at the end. So I get magnesium bromide. Secondly, in case of this ionic compound, I write calcium and oxygen. The subscripts are 2 and 2. They are cancelled because they are the same. We know that calcium is in the second group, so it carries positive 2 charge. Oxygen is present in the sixth group, it carries negative 2 charge. So C S stands for calcium, O stands for oxygen, but I write I D E with it. So I get calcium oxide. In case of this ionic compound, I write aluminium and oxygen. According to criss-cross method, this two subscript belongs to oxygen. This three subscript belongs to aluminium. This Al stands for aluminium. This O stands for oxygen. But I write IDE at the end. So I get aluminium oxide. Now in case of this ionic compound, I write rubidium and fluorine. The subscripts are 1 and 1. So rubidium carries positive 1 charge and fluorine carries negative 1 charge. Rb stands for rubidium, F stands for fluorine, I write IDE at the end. So I get rubidium fluoride. Thus using this simple method, we can easily name any ionic compound. Now we will learn naming ionic compounds of transition metals. Well, consider these two compounds and write their respective name. Firstly, I write Fe and Cl. According to criss-cross method, two belongs to iron and one belongs to chlorine. Here, the charge on iron is plus two. So I write iron. Remember that I write Roman 2 with the iron. This 2 Roman digit means iron has plus 2 charge. Let me repeat it. This 2 Roman digit means iron has plus 2 charge. So I get iron 2 chloride. Secondly, I write iron and chlorine. According to criss-cross method, this 3 belongs to iron and 1 belongs to chlorine. Now I write iron, the charge on chlorine is 3. So I write here 3 and then I write chloride. So I get iron 3 chloride. Thus remember that iron 2 chloride means iron carries plus 2 charge. While iron 3 chloride means iron carries plus 3 charge. Now consider this ionic compound. I write chromium and oxygen. According to criss-cross method, this 3 belongs to chromium, 2 belongs to oxygen. I write chromium, the charge on chromium is plus 3, so I write here 3 and I write oxide. So I get chromium 3 oxide. In case of this ionic compound, I write zinc and fluorine. According to criss-cross method, this two belongs to zinc and one belongs to fluorine. I write zinc, the charge on zinc is positive two. I write two and then I write fluoride. Thus I get zinc two fluoride. Therefore, using this method, we can easily name any ionic compounds of transition metals. Now we will learn naming ionic compounds of polyatomic ions. I will teach you some common polyatomic ions like nitrate NO3, it carries negative 1 charge. Sulfate ion SO4, it carries negative 2 charge. Sulfite ion SO3, it carries negative 2 charge. Phosphate ion PO4, it carries negative 3 charge. Phosphite ion PO3, it carries negative 3 charge. And carbonate ion CO3, it carries negative 2 charge. Now let's consider this ionic compound. Firstly, I write the polyatomic ion. It is CO3 
are carbonate ion and then i write sodium according to criss cross method two belongs to carbonate ion so the charge on carbonate ion is negative 2 this one belongs to sodium so the charge on sodium is positive 1 na stands for sodium while the polyatomic ion is carbonate so i get sodium carbonate secondly consider this ionic compound as usual i write the polyatomic ion the polyatomic ion is so4 or sulfate ion and then i write potassium according to criss cross method two belongs to sulfate ion and one belongs to potassium k stands for potassium so4 stands for sulfate ion so it is potassium sulfate in case of this organic compound i write pu4 and then i write magnesium according to criss cross method three belongs to po4 and two belongs to magnesium mg stands for magnesium po4 is phosphate ion so it is magnesium phosphate in case of this ionic compound the polyatomic ion is no3 and the metal atom is calcium according to criss cross method one belongs to nitride ion and two belongs to calcium ca is calcium no3 is nitrate ion so it is calcium nitrate thus using this method we can easily name any ionic compound having polyatomic ion now we will learn naming molecular compounds or covalent compounds remember that molecular compounds are those chemical compounds which are formed by mutual sharing of electrons now to learn naming molecular compounds you must learn these two rules firstly you must learn some prefixes like mono di tri tetra penta hexa etc secondly you must learn that at the end of second element we always write ide using these two rules we can name any molecular compounds for example consider carbon dioxide here the symbol of carbon is c di means two and oxide mean oxygen so i write co and i write this two as a subscript so i get co2 thus using this rule we can name any molecular compound now consider these molecular compounds this p stands for phosphorus this cl stands for chlorine and 5 means penta i write phosphorus there are five atoms of chlorine i write penta chlorine is the second element i write chloride so i get phosphorus penta chloride in case of this molecular compound i write nitrogen there are two atoms of nitrogen so i write di secondly i write oxygen there are three atoms of oxygen i write tri thus i get dinitrogen trioxide in case of this molecular compound there is only one atom of sulfur the second element is fluorine and there are six atoms of fluorine i write hexa thus i get sulfur hexafluoride in case of this molecular compound i write phosphorus there are four atoms of phosphorus so i write tetra the second element is oxygen i write oxide there are six atoms of oxygen so i write hexa thus i get tetra phosphorus hexa oxide therefore using this simple rule we can easily name any molecular compound or we can easily name any covalent compound